Well, hello there, and welcome to my first ever video. This means you are one of the OGs, so congrats for that. I hope you enjoyed the video, just make sure to leave a comment below if you have any feedback, positive or negative. Before anything else, I'd like to make it clear that I don't work for Lolovitics. I wasn't paid to make this video or anything like that. I was just the one who came up with the formulas for the feature and wanted to make a video on it. See, a few years back, Lolovitics used to only have one delta, which was just how more or less often the champion won the matchup than the average champion, and it used to only exist for matchups, not duos. From now on, when I say Delta, I am referring to what is now Delta 1 because that was the original Delta. This Delta is cool because if you sort by it, you can see which champs get countered by the one you're analyzing and vice versa. But me and some other people were chatting in the Lolitics Discord and noted two problems with it. The first one is that you can't compare Deltas for different matchups. For example, looking at Yumi here, we can tell she counters Ezreal because he has the highest Delta, but the Delta is only negative 0.42. The same matchup on Nyla has Delta of 2.78, but it's way further down the list. This is because Nyla just has a higher win rate than Yumi. So who counters Ezreal the hardest, Yumi or Nyla? We can't tell from these Delta ones. So a Discord user by the name of Patu X proposed that the Delta should be the difference between the measured win rate in the matchup and some expected win rate calculated with the win rates of both champs by themselves. After some discussion, a formula was invented to calculate this expected win rate. Grievous, the developer of Lolitics, then implemented it and called the new Deltas normalized Deltas. However, that formula didn't really work well, so the normalized deltas didn't make much sense. I eventually decided to try to come up with a better formula that would address the various issues with the previous one. Something I specifically wanted to address was the non-linear nature of win rates. See, when you're just linearly adding up numbers, you're kind of assuming that they can go from negative infinity to positive infinity, but win rates only really make sense between 0% and 100%. If a champion had 99% win rate, then the lowest delta anyone could have against them is negative 1% because you can go below 0% win rate, but if a champ did in fact have a 0% win rate against a champ with 99%, that would be a literally impossible matchup, it doesn't make sense for it to have a low delta. I really wanted to make sure the formula I came up with could take into account this non-linearity of win rates, that the expected win rates should be bound between 0% and 100%. Fortunately, I wasn't the first person to ever take note of this issue of non-linearity in win rates. In fact, at the time, I was really getting into rating systems and was reading a bit on Mr. Elo, the guy who invented the most popular rating system, and he had to deal with the same issue all the way back in the 60s. See, Elo was, as far as I know, the first rating system to have a solid statistical basis. It relied on calculating the probability of each player winning based on their ratings. But while players can be infinitely good or infinitely bad, the probability of winning has to still be between 0% and 100%. The way Elo addressed it was by using a non-linear function to map rating differences to win probability. The function he ended up going with is this one, where d is the rating difference for the game. With this formula, he could work linearly with ratings by adding them up and subtracting them, and then convert the final result to a win probability. Well, I figured I could do the same thing. We can reverse the formula to give us a rating difference from measured win rate, and if we assume that the measured win rate was acquired by playing against the average opponents, we can conclude that the rating difference is just the champion's rating. Then we can just add and subtract ratings from different champions without having to worry about non-linearities. With this in mind, I came up with a new way to calculate the expected win rate. We can just subtract the rating differences of the two champions, and then calculate the win rate with that. I pitched this formula in the Discord and Grievous replaced the old formula with it. At some point, normalized deltas got renamed to delta 2 and that's how we got to where we are. Originally this was all just for matchups, but Alamango, an active member of the Discord, insisted we should really figure a better delta for the duels as well. And after giving it some thought, I figured out the same approach could be used for duels. All that had to be changed was the ratings had to be added rather than subtracted. So Grievous added Delta 2s for duels as well. And that was a very big improvement. See Delta 1 in duels works way worse than Delta 1 in matchups, because it used the approach of calculating an expected win rate from the win rates of both champs. But the formula it chooses is just averaging the win rates, which works really really poorly. You wouldn't expect the comp with two 40% win rate champions to win 40% of the time, because they win 40% of the time when they have 50% win rate champions on their team. That's exactly what Delta 1 does, it just averages the win rates. Delta 2, on the other hand, using the, the yellow approach, expects them to win 30.8% of the time instead, which makes much more sense. This is very useful because Delta 1 on duos ends up being very biased against low win rate champions. For example, Yumi plus Zeri has a Delta 1 of negative 2.12, even though they actually have great synergy. This is because Zeri has a very low win rate in general. Their Delta 2, on the other hand, is 3.14, which makes way more sense, and it's actually the third highest among ADCs for Yumi. This really useful feature is exclusive to Lolitics. 
Yuzo Chiji, Opito Chiji, and Blitzo Chiji don't even have deltas, and Mobilitics only has deltas from matchups on the same lane, and even then, it's only the delta one. This is one of those things that Lolitics just does better than every other site. Going beyond delta twos, though, we can extend this approach even further. Instead of calculating the win rate delta, we can keep everything as ratings and calculate a rating delta instead. This rating delta is just a rating for the pair of champions analyzed. With this in mind, we can go further than expected win rates for duels while taking into account both synergies and counters. For example, we can calculate a rating for Yumi, a rating for Nyla, a rating for Ezreal, and a rating for Yumi plus Nyla, Yumi versus Ezreal, and Nyla versus Ezreal. And then we can add slash subtract all these ratings to get a rating difference for Nyla plus Yumi versus Ezreal, which can then convert to win rate to get a robust estimation of the win rate of Nyla plus Yumi versus Ezreal. That's three champions. This is really big because you can't usually get stats from complex combinations like three champions. The, the number of games falls really, really short. But with this approach, you're only taking into account pairs of champions, so you don't fall into issues with lack of games. This can be extended further to estimate win rates for any combination of champions as long as each pair has enough games for win rates to be usable. In fact, I've made a tool that lets me analyze entire drafts at a time in this way. For example, here are the results for game 1 of TRX vs GNG, the world semi-finals that happened earlier this week. This sheet is a bit fancier, since it includes side advantage calculations, but it's just using the same concept behind Delta 2s. Here you have the ratings of each individual champion, here you have the rating for each matchup, Here's the ratings for all the duos, both on red side and blue side. Here's the total contribution of each champion, taking into account their duos, their matchups, and their overall win rate. Finally, here we have the summary of the analysis, as well as the expected win rate. We also have this for the without side advantage, and without taking into account the overall win rates, because this tool is using cache data from all analytics for all ranks, it's in 12.18 and 12.17, 12.18 is the world's patch. So this is not entirely applicable for properly because it's all ranks, and so cute on it, but it's still useful to have all this data aggregated like this. In this case, there isn't anything particularly interesting about the draft as there weren't really any hard counter picks or super synergies, but you can use the same approach to compare alternatives. For example, according to the tool, Azir has the worst champion in the draft because of his bad overall win rate, so we could check which other champions would have better expected results. I've made a Python script that sorts possibilities for the selected lane by their expected win rate in the draft, so I can just run that to compare other mid laners to Azir. Here Heimerding would be the best pick according to this tool, which makes sense considering just how hard he counters Silas. We can make the argument that Azir's win rate is only bad because we're looking at stats from all ranks, so we can also just ignore the overall win rates and look only at counters and synergies. If we do that, Heimer still remains as the best alternative, again because he just counters Silas super hard. It's actually one of the highest tell the that I've ever seen on statistically significant stats. This last part was more of just a showcase of what having modular and robust tools allows you to do. If you want me to make a more in-depth video about using these tools, make sure to let me know in the comments below. Regardless, if this interests you, I suggest following me on Twitter, at JNCLol. I'll be live tweeting analysis of the drafts with this tool during the finals, and in general, I tend to post analytical League of Legends stuff over there. So give me a follow if that's your cup of tea. I'm sure I'll remember to include the Twitter handle in the video when I edit this video. Right? Editing me? You won't forget. Hey, that's the end of the video. Thanks for sticking to the end. Comment something with the word banana down in the comment section so I know you're one of the real ones who watched the full video. I'm also working on an in-depth video about Nyla builds with damage calculations, stats analysis and some real game scenarios. It's a very high effort video so it's been taking me a while to do and I don't know when it will be finished so make sure to subscribe and click the bell notification below. Well, that's everything. See you next time.